Okay. First, uh, uh, this is an overview. I want to give you an introduction about CRISPR-Cas system and the applications to use CRISPR-Cas in your research. And then what can Origin offer you to help your CRISPR-Cas project. And then I will give you detailed procedures how to use CRISPR-Cas using case study tagging HSD60 with HA tag, followed with a Q&A. So what is CRISPR-Cas? CRISPR-Cas is a prokaryotic acquired immunity against the viral and the plasma invasion. In the genome, there is a CRISPR-Cas loci, and CRISPR is a clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeat, shown as the black triangle here. Those are the repeats. And the CAS is CRISPR-associated genes. Upon uh, foreign DNA invasion, CAS complex will chop it up and uh, into small fragment. It's called spacer. And then it's integrated into CRISPR. And the foreign DNA fragment can then be transcribed into CRRNA, then for a CRISPR RNA. First as a precursor. And then the pre-CRNA is a further processed uh, into individual CRNAs, then complex with the CAS targeting the corresponding foreign DNA. There are three types of uh, CRISPR-Cas, type 1, 2, and 3. Type 2 CRISPR-Cas, it only needs one CAS protein. CAS9 mediates the CRNA guided the targeting of the foreign DNA. CAS9 is the nucleus. It needs the RNA duplex, cRNA and the trace RNA. Trace RNA also stands for transactivity cRNA. So this RNA duplex will bring Cas9, this is the blue part, to the targeting A in a sequence of specific matter. So Cas9, the nucleus has two domains. It will cut both strands into double strand break. The target sequence is only 20 base pairs. That's also in the CRNA, 20 base pair target specific sequence. The target sequence in the target DNA is also 20 base pairs, but it requires a pan motif. That's for protospacer adjacent motif, which is NGG. N can be any nucleotide. This is, uh, NGG has to be immediately follow the three prime end of the target sequence. But this NGG is not included into the CRNA. Top two CRISPR-Cas system has been modified to be a genome editing tool. Instead of targeting foreign DNA, it's designed to target cellular genome to cause up chain break. So in this system, it needs two components. First is the codon optimized Cas9, the nucleus, and then is the Garnet RNA, um, which that's the new term, but it's a fusion um, one RNA transcript of a CRNA and trace RNA. The CRNA is the 20 base pair target specific RNA, trace RNA. Um, it's showing here both the, this is the green and blue, that's one guide RNA, and the green part is the target specific, and the blue part is the um, trace RNA part, but it can be also called guide RNA scaffold. So the green protein, that's the Cas9, the nucleus, and uh, after the guide RNA, uh, recruiting Cas9 to the genome, Cas9 will cause double strand break. Okay, so basically here, for the enzyme to work, you need three elements. You need the Cas9, you need the target sequence, and you need the scaffold. Right, right. Mm. right. So I will illustrate with the one of the origins CRISPR-Cas9 vector to show how it works. So in this PCAS guide vector, the codon optimized Cas9 is under CMV promoter, and uh, there are clone inside for you to clone the target sequence, the 20-bit pair target sequence in the vector. 
and this is the GRN schedule. So the GRNA will be expressed continuing the target um, specific sequence and GRN schedule under U6 promoter. So therefore, after transfecting this vector into cells, you will express Cas9 and the sequence specific RNA, which will lead to targeted double joint break. So as uh, Shuang mentioned that the three components here, um, Cas9 and GIRNA scaffold is already built in the vector because um, the GIRNA scaffold is constant, does not change. The only variable is your 20 pair, uh, 20 base pair target sequence. You only need to clone your 20 base pair target sequence in this vector. And then you can transfect this vector into your cells into sequence specific subgen break. So this the CRISPR CAS system is so simple and easy to use. It has um, generated a huge excitement since uh, its discovery last February because it's an uh, evolutional discovery in uh, genome editing. Researchers have been working hard to find an efficient genome editing tool. Here are the two known genome editing systems, the single finger nucleus and TALEN. Both are protein guided and both are artificial fusion um, proteins with a DNA binding domain and a DNA cleavage domain. In both systems, is a FOC1. In single finger nucleus, the DNA binding domain is single finger, and the limitation is the availability of single fingers. For tailing, the DNA binding domain is tail, transcription activator like a factor, in the central region, it has around 15 repeats. Each repeat about 34 amino acids. It only differs by two amino acids, which defines the recognition of the nucleotide A, T, C, or G. If you want to target different gene sequence, you have to engineer this tail. So due to the repetitiveness, it is very hard very difficult to assemble and sequence the repeat. In contrast, the CRISPR-Cas system is RNA-guided, so you only need to clone that 20 base pair target sequence in the vector. So it's very easy, simple, and affordable. And also this system is very efficient. I will show you some data later. And also because the uh, stringency of the target sequence the only need is a PAM sequence with a three nucleotide, very loose um, stringency. So they basically, you can all basically knock in any site, unlike the zinc finger. There's a lot of right. restriction. Right. So after the precise targeted uh, um, genome break, you can pursue your genome editing through the repair mechanism. So. So there are two main repair mechanisms to repair double strand break. Uh, one is through homologous recombination. You will need a um, repair template. So through re um, homologous recombination, the information in the repair template will be integrated into the genome. So you can get the desired gene knockout or specific mutations, deletion insertions, or even tagging in dozens of genes. You can knock in reporter, and you can do inside the promoter study. And the second the repair mechanism is a non-homologous in the joint repair. So in this repair, there is no repair template. And the ends of the breaks will be the joint together. So it will have the insertion, deletions, and mutations. So what can be used as a donor template in that? If you want, um, to do to make short mutations, insertion, deletion, you can use the long oligos, so like around 100 base pair. And these short sequence can also be cloned in a vector, such as a pack vector. If you want to do long deletion insertions or gene knockout knocking, you will need to clone the template plasma in the vector. Pack vector is fine. So a short summary of what I have introduced to you about CRISPR-Cas. CRISPR-Cas will generate a targeted double strand break. And if there's no donor template DNA, the double strand break will be repaired by non-homologous end joining. 
leading to unpredicted uh, in doubt. And if um, there is a donor template DNA, you can get desired mutation in research and duration. So next, I want to give you more details uh, uh, of application that you can use CRISPR-Cas9 for. The first is gene disruption. There's no donor template DNA. This shows the diagram of a, a genome structure. This is a promoter. And the blue boxes are axons, and the lines, uh, the line is uh, are, are the introns. So the double stranded break here will be joined together by non-homologous in joining. You will have um, different insertions, deletions, or mutations. Uh, you you will get a pool of mutations. So the second is gene knockout with a reporter knocking at the same time. So this will need a um, repair template. So the functional cassette in the repair template will be incorporated, integrated into the genome through homologous repair um, mechanism. And the functional cassette could be different fluorescent protein or memorizic marker to help you select the edit cells. Number three, you can do specific mutations such as SNPs. Um, there are SNP-associated diseases and gene therapy or gene correction. You can get desired deletion insertions. You can even tag in the endogenous genes. So they, this information also will be provided in the repair template. And this mutation will be integrated into the genome where homologous recombination. So the number four, you can do endogenous promoter study. So you can insert luciferase at the far end of the gene right downstream of the promoter, endogenous promoter. So you can do endogenous promoter activity following different stimuli, such as pathogen infection or different cytokine treatment. Number five, you can do conditional knockout. So if you have a um, essential gene you want to knock out or you want to do tissue-specific study, you can insert LOCKP around the axons you want to knock out. And in the presence of a query, the axon will be flocked out. So you will get a knockout. So number six is a safe harbor insertion of a exogenous gene. So you will get controlled insertion. Copy number is one copy at the location, specific location in the genome. So as you already know that, through the stable integration by transfection or lengthy transfection, the gene is randomly integrated in the genome. So this might interrupt some gene expression, such as tumor suppressors, or activity in the neighboring gene, such as oncogene. A lot of people are concerned about this. It has been shown that avs one side is a safe harbor for gene integration, for gene insertion. avs one is the wild type and they know associate virus integration site. CRISPR caps can be used to insert genes at this safe harbor. So this is a diagram showing how it works. Uh, AVS1 is uh, on CRISPR-19, and you can design CRISPR caps to specifically target AVS1 site, called double strand break here. And then in the template DNA, you have the AVS1 homologous arm, and your gene of interest will be integrated into AVS1 specifically. Next, I will print some public data using CRISPR-Cas. So this paper is uh, published um, on Science last February, two paper back-to-back -back on Science. This is from Dr. Feng Zhang's group. And this data is showing that you can get gene disruption without donor template DNA. The sequence highlighted in blue is the target sequence. And um, I, without template repair DNA, the double percent break is joined together by non homologous end joining. So you will get insertions or deletions, different deletions or mutations. This paper is a second paper on the same science issue. This is from Dr. George Church's group. And this data shows you can do gene correction with the donor template DNA. 
So in their system, their model, they use um, happy to nine three stable cells expressing a disrupted GFP. Uh, the GFP sequence is disrupted with a stop codon and AAVS1 sequence. So they designed the targeted sequence. They designed two target sequence. Target one showing in green, uh, red, target two showing in green. And in the repair template DNA, they have the correct GFP sequence. So through homologous recombination, the GFP sequence is restored, and you can see green fluorescence after transfection. This is in the same paper. Um, they do they use cell sorting for GFP plus two cells. In the meantime, they also use a TLN as comparison. So they found out that CRISPR-Cas is more efficient in gen genome editing than TLN. So CRISPR-Cas about four, per, four to eight percent of efficiency. This is the amazing part about Cas9 um, system. It's like ten to twenty fold increase of the. Um, mutation events or editing events mm -hmm. than talent. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, this paper is from Dr. Rudolf Yenish's group. It published on cell last August. And in this uh, data they showed they came to endogenous gene tagging with a fluorescent protein. Um, this is a, a diagram of genomic structure of nanos. Um, the blue boxes are axons and the black lines are introns. Uh, they want to tag uh, the nanog at the C terminus with a cherry. And the C terminus is uh, in axon 4. So you need design target sequence around stop codon. So this is a target sequence showing red, and this is in antisense strand. So this is NGG, that's PAM motif. So in the repair DNA, you have the cherry fused uh, in frame with the C terminus. And the through homologous repair, you can integrate cherry in frame and the C terminus of NANOG. So here they show the fluorescent study. In blast assist, they are able to see the cherry tag and NANOG uh, expression. And also in yes out, they can also visualize the cherry tag NANOG. Because NANOG is the early development marker, so after ESL differentiation, you, you don't see the uh, nano expression. So this provides a tool to visualize the endogenous gene expression with the fluorescent protein. CRISPR-Cas has been successfully used in genome editing in common organism models, such as human, mouse, rat, plant, fish, fly, worm, and frogs. And you can do genome editing in cell lines or scattered whole animals. The next is um, CRISPR-Cas is such efficient and simple genome editing tool. What can Origin offer to help your CRISPR-Cas project? First, we offer all-in-one CRISPR-Cas vectors. We'll express the, the nucleus Cas9, and you can call your 20 star target 16 it. Also, we provide a pre-designed donor vector. We also provide custom cloning services. So this is the, the basic um, all-in-one vector TCAS guide. And I showed you uh, earlier that in this vector, CAS9 is under CMV promoter. And uh, there are cloning sites you can clone your 20 bit uh, pair target sequence in this vector. And then the GRNA will be expressed uh, under U6 promoter. So we this vector, after transfecting to cell, it can lead to sequence-specific double strand break. And this PCAS guide GFP vector, in addition, it has a PGK-driven GFP. Therefore, after transfecting to cells, it will express green fluorescent protein. So you can sort out the transfect cell to enrich um, the transfect cells and increase the genome editing efficiency. This t lent cas guide is in the lent vector backbone. You can use it for heart to transfect cells. You can use the lent wire to infect those cells. We also have T7-driven uh, vectors. 
And some researchers need to use um, MRA, either do MRA transfection or macroinjection. And these two seven vectors can help you. On the left side is the PT7 guide. Uh, you can clone your target sequence in this vector, and guide RA will be under T7 promoter. So therefore, you can you make GRA using T7 in vitro transcription system. And the PT7 Cas9 vector, Cas9 is under T7 promoter. Similarly, you can make Cas9 MRA using the in vitro transcription T7 system. So therefore, you can have uh, make your um, GRA and Cas9 RA, and you can use those, those RA for your transcription or macroinjection study in genome editing. So regarding the pre-designed donor vectors, uh, we offer three different uh, vectors. They're with a different fluorescent protein or reciprocate and uh, different membrane selection marks to help you select LED cells. Uh, you can clone the homologous arms either left or right to the vector. Because the cloning is a little bit tricky, we don't offer those vectors, but we do provide custom cloning service to, cloning, uh, to clone your homologous arms to those vectors. So, Jen, so here the cassette is um, fixed, but the, the, uh, the homologous arm, the customer needs to submit um, their desired sequence for us to make, correct? That's right. You need to provide the left homologous arms and the right homologous arms, and then we can clone those uh, homologous arms into those pre-designed uh, donor vectors. So this is a diagram showing how um, CRISPR Cas9 gene editing works, and um, you clone your target sequence into the TKS guy vector, and code transfects this uh, TKS guy end with the donor uh, DNA containing the uh, functional cassette or your own donor DNA. Um, the functional cassette will be integrated into the genome through a homologous recombination repair. So now these are our custom cloning services. So our CRISPR-Cas customer clone, custom cloning service will be provided by our uh, gene synthesis arm, Blue Heron, as the Schwamm mentioned at the beginning. Um, so the website is www.blueheronbio.com. You have to have a bio here. And um, we offer target sequence clone into any of our CRISPR-Cas vectors, even your own CRISPR-Cas vectors. The listing price is 345. Now we are currently running a promotion, uh, which is only 195. So which means that if you clone two target sequence into the CRISPR Cas vectors, the total cost is only 390, which can save you a lot of time. You don't have to do cloning, and it's cheaper than yourself doing cloning. You will receive the fully sequenced. Uh, targeting clone in a CRISPR-Cas vector. So basically, the customer have a design. They gave us the sequence that we can, mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't need to do anything. Just give a sequence that we'll be yeah. able to provide the fully cloned target, uh, the guide RNA uh, vector to them. Exactly. Ready for transfection. Yes. And if, if, if they want the origin to design, we can help them to design the target sequence too. Either way. Yeah, thank you. For donor vector construction with a pre-designed cassette, for example, if we, if the homolux arms, the one KB is the left and the right, each side about 500 bit pairs, the cost is $800. If you prefer your own uh, donor vector design, we can provide that too. Uh, the cost will be just gene synthesis cost. It's a 40 cents per bit pair. I can see the advantage over the zinc finger or talon right here. I know the um, construct for zinc finger or talon plasmids are way over, and uh, probably take a lot longer to create as well because of the repeat nature. Yeah, that's right. So th this I just want to show how uh, the Blue Heron's web website look like. This is the Blue Heron's website, blueheronbio.com, and uh, if you are interested in cloning uh, target sequencing in the uh, Cascade vector, you already have uh, the target sequence design you can um, log in and request for and order on, online immediately. For some customers, if uh, Blue Hammer is not your approved vendor, 
Uh, currently, you can you know send me an email, and uh, um, I can handle it. And we are building um, the custom CRISPR-Cas cloning service at Origins, Origins website now. It will be available soon. So the new product coming is the CRISPR-Cas Deep Harbor AVS1 system. So as I mentioned earlier, that um, the ransom integration by transduction or linkage transduction, it can cause gene disruption or um, artificial activation of other genes, the neighboring genes. Um, and AVS1 is a safe harbor for gene integration. CRISPR-Cas can be used to insert the exogenous genes at this safe harbor spot, AVS1 site. So this is the, the diagram showing what the, the product uh, will look like and how it works. So on the left side is the TKS guy AVS1 vector. With AVS1, the 20 base pair target sequence already cloned. So you don't have to do any, any cloning. So with this vector, you will get specifically double stranded break at AVS1 site. And this is the repair DNA vector containing the AVS1 homologous arms. And through homologous recombination repair, you will, your gene of interest will be integrated into the genome. So Origin is one of the biggest uh, clone provider. We have the content, we have the genome-wide CDN clones. We will offer the CDN clones with the flagging AVS1 sequence. So when you get these two vectors, it's ready to press that into cells so the your gene of interest will be integrated into the genome. With no more, no further cloning. So this basically can you can create a stable cell line with a targeted insertion. Yeah, target at the AVS when the safe harbor put in spot. Mm. So now the next is how to start. Uh, what's the detailed procedures? So I'm going to use the case study tagging HSV60 with HA tag. So the panel A shows the wild hot HSV60 C terminus. Um, the first uh, sequence is that the nucleotide sequence, and the line below is the amino acid sequence. So you can see the stuff going on here. And the panel B, this is the desired HA tag HSV60 sequence. So you can see the HA sequence in green inserted before the subcodon. So because the integration uh, is at before subcodon, you want to design the target sequence around the subcodon. So we um, use the sequence around the subcodon, around 80 base pairs upstream and downstream of subcoda. We paste this around 80 base pair into Origin's uh, free genome design tool to design the target sequence. We pick the two sequences. One is upstream of uh, the subcoda, this is in the same strand, and one is downstream of uh, the subcoda. So this is in anti-sense strand, and this NGG shows here. It's AGG, that's the PAM motif. Um, this is to show you how does Origin's uh, GR design tool look like, how it works. So basically, you'll um, copy your 100 base pair genomic sequence in this box and you click a search, and below it will come up with a po all the possible GR uh, target sequences. Um, I artificially inserted a, a string of A in the sequence and also some GC sequence to show you how to select the target sequences. So as shown in here, I specifically put the three um, sequences here for you to avoid. Um, and the first two had a string of A's. You want to avoid those low complex sequences. And the third sequence has a lot of G and C. That's high GC content is 70%. So you, you want to avoid those high GC content. So you want to pick uh, the GC content between 40 to 68 percent. So after you're selecting um, those sequences, then you can do blocks to check the sequence specificity. So if the off target sequence it does not have a PAM, the NGG, then the off target sequence won't be targeted. So in the target sequence, the 8 to 14 base pairs, three prime ends of the target sequence, that's the seed region. If there are mismatches in this region, that off target sequence won't be targeted either. So now you need to clone the target sequence into TKS guide vector. 
and this is you pick the target sequence, and this is reverse complement. You need to add a proper link to facilitate cloning into the vector. You add the, the linker, and you order the oligos. And after annealing, it looks like this. So this oligo is ready to be ligated into the precut to get the vector. No more digestion. Directly ligated into the vector, and P colonies do sequencing to verify if the target sequence is cloned. So now you have a PKS guy already cloned. You need a donor uh, DNA. So because H is short, so we choose uh, long oligos. So upstream uh, 50 base pair homologous sequence and uh, downstream 50 base pair homologous sequence. Then you do a co-transfection with the PKS guy and the donor oligos into hexonat 3. And the five days later, those cells are ready to analyze if the HA is tagged at the state terminus of HXP60. So for the detailed um, protocols, um, the paper, the system validation is posted both on both Origin and Blue Hand website. It's called system validation. So um, first we use the Western block to analyze if HXP60 is tagged with HA. So we use the ATI HXP60 to uh, measure the total protein, and we also use anti-HA to detect the HA tagged protein. So this is the scramble control. This target one, this scramble control, this target two. So you can see the HSP6 total protein is expressed equally. However, with the anti-HA, you will see that you can detect some HA tagged protein with the target one, but a lot more HA tagged protein with the target two. So which means that we recommend, that's the reason we recommend uh, at least two to three target sequence for genome editing project to make sure one sequence will work. Um, next, we also use the genomic PCR to detect if HA is integrated into the genome. So when you design prim uh, primers, the, the red sequence is the H ta HA tag, and the green sequence is the through prime end of the donor template. So because you want to detect the HA integration, of course, one primer should be in the HA tag region. And another primer should be downstream of the sigma end of a donor template to avoid the donor oligo contamination. So consistently both ta um, target 1 and 2, we can detect PCR products. But with target 2, we detect more PCR products consistent with the Western blood data. So in summary, uh, we introduce you um, CRISPR-Cas as a versatile, easy, and efficient genome editing system. And the applications you can do gene knockout, mutation, deep hyper gene insertion, and all just offering only one CRISPR-Cas9 vectors, a T7 vector system, and our pre-designed donor vectors. So next, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, if I don't have time to answer a question, you can send email to tech support or send to me.